Welcome back to Sail Hub. Today we're talking about oil changes. This is on a, a Nyad 332, so we're going to go over the brief way to change an oil. And um, we're going to use this. This is a Seago oil pump. This thing is effectively um, basically a vacuum idea. So basically, the, the thoughts of it are is that we can pump all of the oil out of the engine into this and make a an oil change pretty much a mess free job which sounds quite amazing i mean obviously we all know some of the problems with with engines on boats you can't get under the sump dropping a sump plug out is a bit of a mission sometimes you get it all over the sump you get it all over the underneath in the bilge it runs into the the bottom of the bilge and you've just got a whole mess going on for years and years and years so in order to try and keep it clean and tidy we're going to have a look at this fella and see what we can do with this right so let me just find the engine on this girl and we'll see how we can get on so engine on this lies under here and we've got this boat's got pretty good access we've got a couple of clips in here so in order to get a bit more light on the situation just undo these two here and we can take the last part of the um the equation out there all right so a quick rundown on the tools for the job obviously we've got the um Seago vacuum pump here um obviously we've got that that comes with a whole host of hoses it comes with a funnel as well and it's got a clip on here which i presume will become obvious what that's for is later i've got a strap wrench here that's for taking the oil filter off you could use one of the metal ones which has like a, a threaded piece of usually a piece of steel bar and um, flap banding that goes around the, the filter but I find that they don't last very well in a marine environment this one's been with us for ages now and looks as good as the day we bought it other things we've got new oil filter that's a genuine oil filter from Volvo which we always use and some oil again genuine Volvo oil for a Volvo engine I'm not going to tell you what to use on your boat you've got inside your manual it'll tell you what grade of oil you can use I would suggest you use the right grades of oil and use a high quality oil at the end of the day oil is something that wears out when it wears out it gets thinner when it gets thinner when the engine warms up sometimes on idle you don't get quite the pressure that you want into the bearings so you might get a low pressure alarm or something like that i still can't see where i'm going so i'm gonna make some more space i think find my way into the back cabin again okay so i say it's fair to say that we've got a lot of engine space on here and around the corner on this side we've got the um the dipstick so from what i gather we just take the dipstick out give it a wipe and we feed this down there this goes to the bottom of the sump and it just sucks everything back out or so the plan goes and now i've got the hose here so i'll feed that into where the dipstick came from well it's a nice tight fit which is good i presume this is a standard fitment for most engines and that's her you can feel that touching the bottom of the sump so i don't want to go any further because i don't want it to coil up inside if it were to coil up then we'd end up with a whole host of problems there it would actually go in and then come out of the oil at the bottom so that goes on there and we'll just plug this this just pushes in so let's see what we've got here cool place that on the ground so this is the actual vacuum pump itself that goes in the top and then we do this right and now apparently we just pump this and i can feel a small suction building there so that's good hopefully we should be getting some oil come out soon all right and there you go it's coming so i think now i have to keep pumping I'll do that. By this point, Chris was pretty dubious about this because it was coming out, but very slowly. So it was here when he decided that you'd heat the oil up to reduce the viscosity to see if that would help. All right, so there's actually two schools of thought when it comes to taking oil out of engine. There's the one you're supposed to do it, which is to heat the engine up first, and then the oil gets really thin, it's less viscous. So it runs out of the bottom of the sump. Traditionally, that works better. And that is the way that I always do an oil change. But I thought I'm going to try this another way here because overnight all the oil has sank to the bottom of the pan. And 
I thought maybe we could suck that up better without having to get all the oil en engine oil run through the system and it would give her a cleaner oil change for the, the system if you like. So another way that people do it is to put in a pint or half a pint of diesel into the oil filler as well and that helps to thin the oil down, run the engine for two minutes or so, three minutes and then that helps to pull it out. But I'm not too keen on thinning oil down so I don't tend to do that. So what I've done is I've actually just ran this engine now for half an hour and brought it up to running temperature which we've measured on the water temperature. So she gets up to temperature under load, so I had it in reverse on the pontoon. And that basically brings, we brought the temperature up to around 60, 65 degrees. That's where this, the water temperature happy on this engine. That's where the thermostat starts opening and closing. And then I left it for the further 15 minutes to try and get more heat into the oil. So I'm going to see if that's made a difference to this system. Oh, way better, way better. So now it's coming out super quick. So that's much, much better. Which is good because I was starting to wonder if this was a good idea. <laughs> but I suppose I just keep this under vacuum. Yeah, and we're slowly filling up. And on the side of this pot, we've got incremental marks as well, which are helping us to see when we've got the full amount of oil out. And if you're unsure how much oil you should have in your engine it's obviously in the manual and so this is something that's got me thinking you know I mean the world's gone mad on sustainability electric engines and all that kind of stuff and there seems to be more and more and more thoughts about what is sustainable what is not sustainable and it seems to me that you know everyone's going mad on the whole you must have an electric this you must have an electric outboard you must have a you know, a sustainable boat and vessel or car, whatever it is you've got. But I can't help but think, you know, we all know that diesel engines are around and they can be recycled, they're lumps of steel and all that kind of stuff. And we all know what goes involved in mining is not necessarily great for, for oil and drilling for oil and all the rest of it. But then the reality is, how good is it going for lithium? And I know that we can look at the types of lithium and what's causing the problems that you know the cobalt and all the rest of it and there's ways of getting around that now but it's still you know the question still remains which is more sustainable over the the entire lifespan because lithium batteries don't last forever either and neither does a diesel engine but i would hazard a guess that a diesel engine will last longer so I think my thoughts on the matter are, if you've got an engine which is in your boat, I think we should all just look after it and we should keep it. I mean, if you're building a new boat, I don't know. I really, I'm sort of on the fence with that one. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think about that. Sustainability on a diesel engine versus an electric engine, let's say. And obviously we've got hydrogen and all that. You could bring that into the conversation too, really. But I suppose the way I'm looking at it, it makes this polypropylene bottle somewhat maybe even a sustainable thing because when we start looking at where does all this oil go normally if we do this another way you pretty much always get a little bit in the bilge and at some point you will pump your bilge out and what we learned with when we were working with the German Ocean Foundation was just a little bit of oil can cause an absolute nightmare to marine life and algae and the likes and you know it's really important that we look after our oceans and, and to me this Seago bottle it's it's a small step in the right direction and I think for diesel engine owners not only can you keep your hands clean you can keep the oceans clean as well which has got to be a good thing so I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this <laughs> but I'll, I'll just run through what I'm going to do on the side of the engine down here is an oil filter we're going to change that oil filter out. I'm just going to wrap that in a rag, pull it out. I always put the oil into the filter before I put it back on because that means that you're never going to get a vacuum inside the, um, the engine oil system because we don't want to end up with an engine not being lubricated for a stage. So we'll put a bit of oil in that and screw it back on. Top the oil up at the top here and, and that's it really. That's, that's the engine service. We just top it up to the recommended amount that Volvo suggests and then check it on the dipstick and we want it in between the two increments on the dipstick. 
So that's it. Engine service, potentially a sustainable thing. I don't know, let me know what you think. So a quick note on this thing before we wrap up. It's a brilliant piece of kit. I think it really is good to try and make a difference in sustainability and make sure we don't get any oils. You know, we don't want any fossil fuels in the ocean. We don't want to be killing the ocean and the likes. If we're going to run diesel engines, which may actually be as sustainable as an electric engine, the best way to make sure we keep towards that side of the fence is by making sure we do not contaminate our oceans. And I think this is a good way to do it. Regular oil changes produce less smoke and less passing of oil on the rings and the likes. And I think it's important that we maintain our engines properly. So changing the oil at the correct interval and using something like this really will make a difference, I believe. As far as the performance in this goes, I think this is actually quite good. I will say that it's quite hard to get a really good vacuum on it and it is a bit of a workout, but I kind of prefer that than lying around and having to scrub the floors and clean the bilges and be up to my elbows in grease and all that kind of stuff. So I'm a bit of a fan of it, to be honest with you. I think it's quite a good idea. Um, so yeah, that's it for Sail Hub for this week. Please do like and subscribe. Let's keep in touch. Let's also bring into the comments here a little bit of a discussion and a chat within the Sailor community, both here and on Instagram. Let us know what you think about sustainability. It is a bit of a hot topic. It is going to rub a few feathers the wrong way. But let's chat about it. Let's figure out what we think we should do and what people should do with new boats as well. I think it's a really interesting idea and we want to try and make sure we make the right decisions based on all that through the future. Okay, we'll catch you next time, guys.